Hello everyone and welcome to UC Berkeley. We're so excited to have everyone here today for an engineering visit. Um, we just wanted to acknowledge that there's a lot happening in the world. So we're super grateful that you guys are taking an hour out of your day to spend with us. Um, so yeah, with that, I'll quickly introduce myself. Um, my name is Christina. I use the she, her, hers pronouns. I'm originally from Whittier, California, but now a rising senior here at UC Berkeley. I'm actually part of the College of Engineering. I study industrial engineering and operations research. Um, other than being today's moderator and being a campus ambassador, I'm part of the UC Rally Committee, which is one of our largest spirit groups on campus. I'm part of Hispanics in Engineering and Science and Society of Women Engineers. So know a little bit about spirit and a little bit about engineering on campus. Uh, but again, I'll be today's moderator. So I'll be introducing today's tour and then joining you um, at the very end of the tour for the Q&A section. Um, but with that, I'll quickly describe what today's tour is gonna entail. Um, so today's engineering visit will be a 45 minute presentation. You'll see this lovely slideshow on your screen. Um, throughout this, we're gonna be going over everything that's general topics at Berkeley, specific engineering information, and a little bit about student life. Um, so throughout this, type any and all questions in the Q&A function below. Chat is disabled, but Q&A is free for all attendees to use. Um, we'll also have different polls pop up on the screen, so feel free to answer those. Um, let us know whether you're a prospective student, um, uh, parent of a prospective student, alumni, anything like that. Um, this uh, virtual visit is also going to be recorded. There's a bunch of different virtual visits, engineering visits, and panels on our um, YouTube channel, so you can access those on our website. Um, Lastly, I wanted to quickly mention that this is an engineering specific tour. So if you want to learn more broadly about UC Berkeley's campus, we do have general virtual visits that you can sign up for. Uh, this is also through the student perspective with no admissions or financial aid information um, inside of it. So all those questions will kind of just direct you to those departments specifically. Um, and then lastly, we're going to end with the Q&A. So feel free during the first 45 minutes while the slideshow is up, ask those Q&A questions. Um, and then the last 15 minutes, I'll grab from those and ask both of our um, tour guides for today. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. And now I'll let both of our uh, presenters uh, present themselves. Hi, everyone. My name is Amy. I use the she, her, hers pronouns. And I'm originally from Irvine, California. This fall, I will be a rising senior studying electrical engineering and computer science and business administration here at Berkeley. I'm part of the MET or Management Entrepreneurship and Technology dual degree program. And outside of the classroom, I'm really involved in the Berkeley entrepreneurship ecosystem. I'm a part of Excel Scholars, which is an EECS department sponsored program for students interested in startups. And I also volunteer with the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Office here at Berkeley to help provide resources to our student founders. Thank you so much, Amy. Hello, everyone. My name is Kaylin. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I am from the small town of Ojai, California, which for those of you who don't know, is close to Santa Barbara or a little bit north of LA. I'm a rising senior here at Cal. Uh, I'm studying geography as my major, but I'm also getting the certificate and entrepreneurship. Uh, so I'm super, super excited about that. A little bit about me beyond being a campus ambassador. Uh, I've kind of meandered my way throughout Cal. I like to describe it that way because I really have tried to do as many things as possible, uh, generally centering myself in student government and community service. Uh, beyond that, I also work for Cal parents and families. So if you are on that Facebook group, you generally see posts and stuff pop up. That's me doing that. So thank you so much, everyone. I'm so excited to get started. All right, so excited to welcome everyone to UC Berkeley. You should see a poll pop up on your screen right now. We're just interested in finding out who you are and who's joining us today. So on your screen right now, you can see some pictures of our beautiful campus. And the tower in the center that you see is called the Campanile. It is the third tallest clock and bell tower in the world. And if you ever get a chance to come visit UC Berkeley's campus, you can actually take an elevator up to the top of the Campanile and that will give you a gorgeous view of the Bay Area. Next to the Campanile to its right, you can see a picture of students lounging on Memorial Glade. It's this large grassy field in the middle of campus. It's super beautiful, especially um, on a day like that in that picture. Um, I love to do afternoon picnics on Memorial Glade, play Frisbee with friends. It's honestly one of my favorite places on campus. 
So I can see that many of you guys are high school seniors and juniors um, with some community college students, high school sophomore and freshmen. So welcome to Berkeley. We're so excited to do this tour with you today. Awesome, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Um, first and foremost, I just wanna say congratulations and good luck to all your high school seniors. You're almost at the end of high school. You've got a really cool long road ahead of you in terms of college admissions. Please reach out to us if you have any questions at all, we're here for you, um, but get excited. Y'all have a lot ahead of you. It's gonna be just awesome. Like I would not do it over again, but y'all have got this. You're already here, so like you're so ahead of the curve. Anyway, agenda. This is what I like to call as a geography major, a map of words. I tend to get lost a lot despite being a geography major. So this will help keep me on track and it'll help keep you all on track. So we won't get lost today. No getting lost today, folks. So just a little bit about the topics we're gonna be covering today. A general overview of Berkeley, not too general though. We're gonna focus it on you. We have an academic overview, some engineering information. That's what you're here for. Student life and resources, labs and makerspaces, research and our legacy, all these focus towards you, our lovely engineering visitors. Thank you, Kayla, and I love that, a map of words. That's really awesome. Um, all right, now for a little history lesson of UC Berkeley. We were founded in 1868 as the very first University of California. Um, afterwards, as more undergraduate UC schools began to be founded, we became known as UC Berkeley, but you can also hear us be called the University of California, Cal, or just Berkeley. Our mascot is the Golden Bears, and there's a specific bear named Oski, who is our costumed mascot. You'll find him walking around campus, especially during spirit and sporting events always down to give you a hug or a high five or take a picture with you. So if you spot Oski, definitely go say hi. Um, we are a large public school here in the state of California. So we do have a large student body of around 30,000 undergrads and 11,000 grad students of which around 3,700 and 2,300 are engineers respectively. So a very sizable engineering student body as well. Moving on to some academics, five undergraduate colleges, engineering, chemistry, letters and science, Rouse College of Natural Resources and environmental design. We're gonna be talking about two of those today, primarily the College of Engineering, obviously, but also the College of Chemistry because that is where one of our engineering majors is actually hosted. Yes, chemical engineering is not in our College of Engineering. That's not because chemical engineering isn't a real engineering. It's because we have a school of chemistry so why wouldn't we use that? Why wouldn't we put chemical engineering in that? Um, so we have that, it's awesome. In terms of applying directly or transferring, I'm sure that's a question on all of your, your minds right now, because you know I, I feel like definitely we try to sneak in those back doors. However, College of Engineering, just apply directly. Um, I really, really encourage you to do so if you think that you're interested in engineering. Transferring is possible uh, if you work with an advisor and everything, but it really is just so much more difficult than just applying directly and getting in. I really don't recommend it. People have done it, it's a possibility, but if you know that you wanna major, why wouldn't you just apply for it? Also, one thing to note on the application for both the College of Engineering and the College of Chemistry, I believe, you can get a little bit more technical with your application. You can really dive into what you're interested in, dive into some of the projects you've done throughout high school. So that really gives you an opportunity to shine in a way that you won't be able to on the other applications. So just, just do that, like kind of silly not to, um, but best of luck once again for them. All right, now for what you're all here for, the College of Engineering. Um, there are a couple of things that I really love about the College of Engineering. The first is that our classes tend to be very hands-on and project-based. So not only do you get a great foundation of physics and math and other STEM classes, but you really get taught how to build things. Um, Berkeley engineers, especially in Silicon Valley, are known for being great builders. And that's because Berkeley teaches you how to actually build things and apply the foundations and the theory that you learn in class into actually creating websites, building robots, doing all the great engineering stuff. Um, but what I find really special about Berkeley engineering students in general is just that our engineering students have a constant drive to build things that have that help others and have a positive impact. 
Um, honestly, my peers here in the College of Engineering are some of the smartest, most hardworking people I know. But what's most important is that they're also the most driven. Uh, Berkeley engineers are not shy to um, hide away from tackling the world's toughest problems. We're here to take those problems head on and to research them, to develop solutions for them, and ultimately to make the world a better place. And that's just such an exciting and inspiring community to be a part of. Absolutely agree, Amy. Um, I think that's something that's common throughout pretty much the entire school, but especially in engineering. We really don't shy away from problems. We try to fix them um, and make the world a better place. Very, very well said. So now you, see, you should see another poll popping up about what major you're interested in because we're going to start going over those. So first and foremost, I do want to mention all of our majors, all of our 11 majors are ranked in the top nine globally. So no matter what you're doing, you're in a top program. So don't worry too much about it. You can see the major distribution. I really like data. I think it's really cool to look at in a visual form. So you'll see that most students are in the electrical engineering and computer science program or EECS. So you gotta kind of think about that. Think about, you know, in terms of what kind of program you wanna be in. Do you wanna be in a really big one or do you wanna be in a really small niche program? So consider that as you're applying, but again, just follow what you're interested in. I see, you know, honestly, it looks like our distribution here is very similar to what our distribution in the real world is like. So uh, congratulations, y'all are doing exactly what the data says already. That's awesome. In terms of switching majors, it is possible, again, like I was talking about previously with applying directly versus transferring, do your best to apply to the major that you're interested in um, and that you know that you want to do. It's okay to change your mind, but it's just easier if you know what's up from the start, especially if you are applying to a more popular major like EECS or mechanical engineering, those do tend to be a little bit diff more difficult to transfer into. Um, but it depends on the major. And if you're interested in learning more, talk to an advisor. And again, anything is possible if you put your mind to it and you speak with advising because, you know, the College of Engineering has fantastic advising, like they'll get you in the right direction. However, we don't guarantee it. So just set yourself up for success as best as possible. Speaking of success, here we have our postgraduate paths. If you thought that you were done once you get to Berkeley, you thought wrong. There is so much more to do after you graduate Berkeley. Your life doesn't end the second you get here. I know it kind of felt like it did for me, but we're moving on. We're going to great places such as industry. You can work in the Silicon Valley. There are so many different things to work on. There's like just tons and tons of tech companies. Like I could list them off for hours and I still would not get to the end of it. So there are tons for you to do. Graduate school, don't want to leave Cal? Don't then. We have graduate school options too. Check those out. Come stay another few years. Also research, that's something you can do both in your time at graduate school, undergraduate school, anytime you want. Uh, it's just kind of a matter of what you want to do and what you find that you're passionate about once you start here. If you want to make a ton of money once you leave college and go work in industry, go for it. If you want to keep going on your education, you want to solve a very particular problem, also an option for you. Definitely. There's so many different cool things that Berkeley engineers will do after graduation. The possibilities are truly endless. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the different engineering majors we offer in this school. The first is engineering undeclared. This is a great fit for you. If you know that you're interested in engineering, but you're not quite sure what type yet, engineering undeclared allows you to take introductory seminars for your first couple semesters at Berkeley and learn about different engineering disciplines and then end up declaring by your fourth semester. Then we have nuclear engineering. This is a really cool um, area surrounding nuclear processes and using those nuclear processes to develop new technologies. It's actually a really highly interdisciplinary subject. Um, there's so many different applications like electrical power generation, cancer treatment, powering spacecraft, and the nuclear engineering department here at Berkeley is actually one of our smaller programs in the School of Engineering. So it has a low student to faculty ratio and the department is really supportive and encouraging of having students engage in research with their faculty and graduate students um, as undergrads. And so there's a lot of really exciting research opportunities in this department. Next, we have bioengineering. This is a rapidly growing field at the center of engineering, biology and medicine. And it's also a very research heavy department. There's so many cool things you can do with bioengineering from medical imaging technology 
to building devices that diagnose diseases, to even engineering organs to help people with organ failure. So the way I see bioengineering is really anything related to building technologies that help people live healthier lives and have healthier bodies, bioengineering is at the center of that. Awesome. Yeah, those majors are all super, super cool, but check out these other ones that are also really cool. We have industrial engineering and operations research, like our incredible moderator, Christina Studies. Uh, this really focuses in on making complex systems better, optimizing, you know, workflows, that kind of thing, supply chain, all those really cool processes that you don't really think about that make up a business, especially on the global level that, you know, we're considering today. Um, I know one project that an industrial engineering student had to do was figure out how to make the lines at Disneyland faster. Like just those kind of problems, you know, figuring out those really real world complex issues that make our lives go smoothly. Um, it's really, really awesome. I highly recommend you check it out, ask questions. Um, we would love, love, love to answer more questions about that. Moving on to material science and engineering, it's kind of what it sounds like. You work on materials um, both through the science and the engineering part. Wow, crazy, right? Um, so it's developing desirable material properties uh, for a number of different factors, whatever you're interested in working on. This is a really cool environmental uh, major, I personally think. Um, I think it's, you know, I've, I've studied a lot about the environment in my time at Cal. So, you know, learning how we can use the materials that we already have or developing new materials to make sure that we're doing things more safely and uh, much more, um, much more long lasting, because that's one of the key things for the environmental movement is just making sure that the stuff we build lasts and is good. So that's the kind of stuff you get to work on. Awesome. And another great environmental major that we have here in this college is the civil and environmental engineering major. Um, so civil engineering is all about building um, public structures, things like buildings themselves, uh, bridges, roadways, dams, and then environmental engineering is all about making sure that things are sustainable and providing solutions for things like safe air and water quality and waste management. And here at Berkeley, they're combined into one major. And what's really cool is that Berkeley alumni have gone on to build some really cool structures out there in the world. Uh, Berkeley alumni built the Golden Gate Bridge and Levi Stadium, which is where the San Francisco 49ers play. Um, we also have mechanical engineering. This is one of the more broad engineering disciplines, and this is all about building robots and machines and devices. I have a friend who is a mechanical engineer, and I feel like he's always in the maker space, um, creating some new contraption. In his time at Berkeley, he has built um, an electric bike, so he retrofitted his own bike um, to be an electric bike and have an electric motor. And he's also built an indoor smart garden to grow plants in his apartment. Um, so if those projects sound interesting to you, if you're also a maker at heart, then mechanical engineering may be the right fit for you. Mechanical engineering is super, super cool. I think if I were to do an engineering, that's what I want to do. Um, I love all the hands-on stuff that you get to do. It, it really seems like just so much fun. Moving on to engineering science. I have encountered so many engineering science majors in my time here at Cal because I've done a lot of environmental stuff, as I mentioned. Engineering science, I think, is super, super cool. I have tons of friends who do it. Um, you really focus more on the research aspect of engineering on the development side of the field itself, rather than necessarily the hands-on building type things. So if you're interested in forwarding you know, the field of engineering as a whole through all these different fields mentioned, go for it. Uh, my good friend who is an engineering science major is currently pursuing his PhD, actually, which is crazy. I can't even believe my friend, from, it's my, literally my friend from high school, crazy um, in engineering physics. Cause he's like, I wanna, you know, make physics um, better for engineering. I wanna really make sure that like I'm advancing that particular part of the field. I think it's really, really cool that you get to like in this major because you kind of get to focus on an area that interests you. You're not just limited to, or I guess you're not tied to just this broad category. You can really figure out what you're interested in. This is a really, really great program. As I said, if you're interested in doing a PhD, if you're interested in doing research, um, if you're really interested in just kind of making the world a better place and pushing the boundaries of what's possible with engineering. 
All right, and next we have the electrical engineering and computer science major or EECS like we like to call it here at Berkeley. This is one of my majors and I honestly love it. Um, it's all about using computers and computer programming to solve problems and to build cool things. And it's really great in that there's a lot of flexibility in being an EECS major. Computers are so widely applicable into every area of daily life now that it's really easy to combine your computer programming skills with any other interests that you have. Um, some examples of classes I've taken in the EECS department include a computer security class where one of our projects was to actually hack into the course website um, and to discover vulnerabilities in the code. Uh, I took an artificial intelligence class where we wrote a machine learning algorithm to play Pac-Man for us. Um, I'm not very good at Pac-Man myself, but I now know how to write an algorithm to play it for me. Um, and on the electrical engineering side, in my very first electrical engineering class over the course of the semester, um, our project was to build a little robot car that could respond to voice commands. Um, so it had this little speaker at the top and you would talk into the speaker and tell it to go forward 10 paces and turn left and it would follow your instructions. Um, and so that's just one example of Berkeley's really hands-on project-based learning. You actually learn how to apply the material that you learn in your classes. And now moving on to comparing EECS and computer science. I know this is a question that's on a lot of y'all's mind, I'm sure, because you look at our website and you're like, what the heck is the difference between these two? I know when I looked at Cal, I was like, what, what does this even mean? I'm here to tell you. So electrical engineering and computer science, EECS, that's in our College of Engineering. It's definitely more hardware uh, based than um, computer sciences. However, the software component is certainly there and you can dive more into that if you want to but you're able to do a little bit more of the hardware components. Those are some of the required classes. Uh, you have four breadth courses rather than the seven that computer science has. And there's, you know, ethics and specific math. Like there's just essentially different requirements because they're in fundamentally different colleges. They're both very, very flexible. They both allow you to get a really great background in computer science um, or in electrical engineering if you choose to go the EECS route. Uh, but ultimately it's kind of up to whatever you're interested in doing. I know freshman year, it honestly doesn't really matter which one you're doing because freshman year, you take a lot of the same classes. Uh, two of the girls who lived on my floor, one was a computer science major, one was an EECS major. They had all their classes together. They collaborated constantly. They're still doing a lot of the same stuff. Um, I will say that the College of Letters and Sciences, you do come in undeclared and you do have to go through the process of declaring. It's a little bit more competitive um, once you get here versus you know applying in. Uh, EECS is more competitive to apply into and to get into, but once you're in there, you're set for your whole time there. Um, both have a lot of flexibility. I know a lot of people double major as Amy does in either one. You kind of just, you know, figure out what works best for you. I think in terms of computer science, one of the really good things about doing that is the seven breath courses, because you're really exposed, I would say, to quite a lot. Um, I don't necessarily know if it's more, I don't really have the um, the personal experience to back that up. But from my understanding, you do get exposed to a lot more subjects um, and just a lot more um, areas of the world. So that's more what you're interested in. If you want to go beyond computer science, uh, I recommend the CS uh, bachelor of arts. All right. And if you're interested in either multiple majors within the College of Engineering or in different majors, um, across colleges, there are definitely opportunities for that. Uh, but first, you should see a poll popping up on your screen. And we're interested in finding out where you're joining us from today. Um, so please fill that out. We'd love to hear uh, where in the world you are calling in from. Um, all right, so on to joint majors. So joint majors are pre-established double majors within the College of Engineering that combine two existing engineering majors. So you could be a joint major in material science and engineering and mechanical engineering. So a great choice if you're um, interested in more than one engineering discipline. Uh, but also if you don't wanna pursue a full major, you can also pursue a minor. These allow you to try different, um, take classes in a different subject, but with all, without all the requirements. There's also different certificates you can take. Um, there's the Design Innovation Certificate offered through the Jacobs Institute for Design. And there's also the Entrepreneurship and Technology Certificate, which Kaylin um, is taking 
and that's offered through the Satarja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology, or SCET. Um, that's a really great uh, department we have here at Berkeley. It's essentially our academic branch of entrepreneurship. And the classes you can take as part of SCET are all really cool. Most of them tend to be very project-based. A lot of them you form teams and you work on different business ventures over the course of a semester. Um, I've heard that there are classes uh, regarding meat alternatives, um, education technology, blockchain, big data. Um, so, so many different opportunities to kind of dip your toes into entrepreneurship. Um, next up, we have the Management, Entrepreneurship and Technology Program or MET, which is the program that I'm in. It's a really great dual degree program between the College of Engineering and the Haas School of Business. Um, and it's a very small program, about 50 students per year. So we have a very tight knit community of all students who are interested in tech innovation and entrepreneurship. So if that sounds interesting to you, I would definitely recommend applying. And one thing to just mention a little bit about the MET program in terms of the application process. Uh, if you do apply for MET and for whatever reason you don't get in, you're still considered for that engineering major. So apply for MET. There's no harm in doing so. I'm sure Amy would say the exact same thing. Apply, apply, apply. What is the harm in trying? Moving on to our College of Chemistry. I told you we'd be getting back to this. So College of Chemistry is a lot smaller than College of Engineering. That's because there's only three majors. We have Chemistry, Chemical Biology, and Chemical Engineering, what you're all here to hear about. So Chemical Engineering, it's, you know, traditional chemical engineering field. You get to work within the number one College of Chemistry in the entire world. How cool is that? We discovered, I can't even tell you how many elements. Well, I can because it's on the slide. 16 elements discovered here. Berkelium, California, Seaborgium. Um, one thing that I like to say is that it's a good thing that Cal has so many different names that we like to call ourselves. Otherwise, they'd stop running out. They sorry. Otherwise, they'd run out of names to name the elements after. So, go bears to that. Um, we have a lot of elements. Again, you apply directly to the College of Engineering and Chemistry both. Uh, just the application is slightly different than the general application. You get, I believe, there's a supplemental part to it to make sure that you. Get to go in depth with all of your wonderful wonderful expertise and knowledge uh, chemical engineering is just awesome uh, again i just know so many people who are a part of that they absolutely love it it's a lot of hands-on labs and stuff you get to work in this really cool uh, building called Vladimir hall uh, there's just so many, so many lab spaces you get to do just the coolest coolest things um, i'm very very excited for you all this is a really cool like opportunity for you all uh, just in general, I mean, like once you get to college, you get to do so many like hands-on things. Um, and the College of Chemistry and Chemical Engineering are certainly no exception. I will say Chemical Engineering does still interact quite a bit with the College of Engineering. Don't worry that you're just gonna be stuck in this College of Chemistry bubble. You're not, and honestly, what an awesome bubble to be a part of even if you were. Um, but don't worry, you're gonna be involved in so many different things. You're gonna still be an engineering student. You're still gonna have all the resources but you'll be in a slightly smaller college with people who are doing classes that are more similar to yours. All right, now let's go over what it's like to actually be a Berkeley student and take classes here. So most engineering classes will follow a lecture, discussion section, and lab format. And what that means is two or three times a week, the professor will give a lecture of about an hour long to the entire class. This is your first introduction to the material. And then every week there will also be an hour long discussion section. These are small group sections of around 20 to 30 students that are led by our graduate student instructors. And these are your chance to work on worksheets, practice the material, go over things that you learned in lecture. And my favorite part are the lab sections. These are sections that happen every week. They can be between an hour to three hours long, depending on the class. And this is where you actually get to build things. Um, this is where you make the robot car or um, you hack into the course website. It's all about applying the material that you learned in lecture. Um, another question that people often have is how big are classes at Berkeley? Um, they can get big depending on the class, but it's really dependent on the major and especially what level of class it is. So our introductory classes, especially for computer science, can get very large over 
a thousand students. But as you take more classes as a junior and senior, um, take more upper division classes that are more specialized, um, the classes definitely do get smaller. They can be between 50 to around 300 students. Um, and honestly, the large class sizes haven't bothered me at all in my time at Berkeley. Um, the way I like to look at it, um, most of the learning happens in the section and discussion section and lab classes anyway. And whether the professor is giving a lecture to a thousand students or 10 students, it really doesn't matter. You're listening to the same lecture anyway. Um, and so large class sizes, not a big deal at Berkeley. Um, you'll get a lot of small uh, group attention in your section and lab sections. Yeah, just want to echo exactly that. Don't worry about the large class sizes. I know coming from high school, that can seem very intimidating. But 100%, it really is, you know, just it's a lecture at the end of the day. It's going to be PowerPoints. Does not matter how many students are in it. If it's 100, 1,000, or 10, as Amy said, um, don't worry about it. Also, tell your parents not to worry about it in terms of the COVID restrictions. Um, I, you know, as a Cal parents intern, I've seen a lot of parents be concerned about, oh no, like 250 students, like is the max for. Um, for in-person classes. Okay, but like you still have the discussion section. So even if your class is a thousand students, you're still gonna be getting the most important hands-on experience. So don't worry about that. You'll still get your in-person experience. Just awesome. Uh, moving on to student life, student diversity. So we have our women in science and engineering theme program. This is you know something you do your freshman year. Uh, this is actually within the dorms itself, which I think is super, super cool. You get to live with a bunch of women and in engineering. So if you're interested in doing that, apply if you're housing. That's just a very basic thing you get to do. Um, along with all of our other theme programs, again, check out our uh, normal or like our general tour if you're interested in learning more about housing and all that. Uh, but moving on, we have our Black Engineering and in Science Student Association, or BESA for short, Hispanic Engineering and Scientists. Uh, we also have EOP STEM, that's for um, low income, uh, first generation, a lot of those, or a lot of that kind of students. Um, um, EOP in general is a program that goes throughout a lot of the things that Cal, not just STEM, but they do have a STEM component and a STEM specific organization. So you can really make sure that you're getting support and help you need. I know that EOP gives out a lot of free resources. I know they help with like a lot of the class materials that you might need. They provide just tons and tons of resources um, that are specific to EOP students. It also gives you priority for housing, which I think is really cool. We also have our pre-engineering program that you can do uh, before you even start and you know get a strong footing with that and get going. Yep, and a big part of student life is also getting involved in clubs and competitions. We have over a thousand student orgs here at Berkeley. So no matter what you're interested in, there's gonna be a group for you. Um, we have on this slide a list of examples of some engineering student orgs. Some that I'll highlight are the Cal Soul team. They're pictured in the bottom left picture with their solar powered race car. Um, and the whole premise of Cal Soul is that they build these fully sol solar powered vehicles and then they'll go and race them um, in different competitions. So um, two years ago in 2019, they went to the World Solar Challenge, which is located in Australia and they raced their car across 3000 kilometers in the Australian outback. Um, really crazy experience. I recommend visiting their website and reading the blog on that experience. Another one on highlight is CalHacks. This is the world's largest collegiate hackathon with around 2000 attendees. And it's located right here at UC Berkeley. Um, so if you don't know what a hackathon is, it's essentially a multi-day event where computer programmers from all over the world will gather in one place and work on intensive projects together, like building an app or a website over the course of two or three days. Um, it's a really fun time. Berkeley always gets a ton of sponsors. So there's a lot of free food, free swag. Um, and it's really cool that Berkeley has the largest collegiate hackathon in the world. Dang, those are all so, so cool. Thank you so much, Amy, uh, for going over those. Um, CalHacks is super, super cool. Yeah, definitely check it out. I've never participated, but I've seen it and everyone looks like they're having an absolute blast. Moving on to labs and makerspaces. This is so cool. You guys don't even realize how cool this is to have all these labs and makerspaces. Like these are 
like all of these are really great opportunities for you to get that hands-on building experience and really just make sure that you're building something tangible, which is like the coolest part about college in general, I personally think, is being able to make something that you can show someone else and be like, hey, I made this. I didn't just do this intellectual thing. I physically made this. Uh, we have all these wonderful labs and maker spaces. I think Davis Hall is the most impressive looking for sure. I like to walk by it all the time. It's our civil engineering construction bay. Um, it has built, built so many different parts of big structures in the Bay Area as a whole. It's just it's so cool. Like I highly encourage you guys to come check it out on campus. It's really a sight to behold. Um, I like getting lost in that area. It's just, it's so, so, oh my God, yeah. Um, anyway, I really like working with tools personally. Um, that's what I've been doing a lot over the summer. That's what my internship is based on is uh, construction tools actually. So I have a lot of experience with that. Um, Jacobs Hall is really, really incredible. That's where, you know, you can go and do a little bit more fine scale uh, makerspace stuff, maker stuff. Um, you can get a pass for it actually, if, even if you're not an engineering student. So if that's still up your alley, go for it. I know my roommate, my freshman year, went and did a ton of 3D printing there, um, our freshman year, because she just, she really enjoyed it. So you can really get involved in it no matter what. We also have a Richmond Field Station. That's a little bit farther removed from campus, but it still does a lot of really incredible stuff. I highly recommend that you take a class that takes you over there because from what I've heard, it is just insane. Yes, we are so lucky to get access to so many amazing facilities as Berkeley students. So definitely recommend that you take advantage of them as much as possible. All right, now on to research. This is something that many Berkeley engineers will be involved in at some point in their career as Berkeley students. Uh, many of my friends have gotten involved in the Undergraduate Research Apprentice Program or URAP. That's a really easy way to kind of get involved in research as early as your first semester freshman year. Um, you essentially get matched with a professor or a research lab and you get to work on research that's of interest to you. We also have the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. This is the lab that's located on the hill behind Berkeley's campus. It's a US national laboratory and it conducts scientific research on behalf of the Department of Energy which is super cool. And they usually focus on really deep technical research. Um, and I know of some students who have gotten involved in the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. It is pretty difficult to get an internship or research position there, but if you really try hard at it, um, it's definitely possible. A couple other things I'd like to highlight on the slide are the library pictures. So in the top right, you see a picture of East Asian Library, my personal favorite library on campus. It's located right next to Memorial Glade and it has these gorgeous window walls you can see in the back that let in a ton of natural light, a really soothing place to study. And it's also very close to the engineering buildings. So it's a great place to drop by in between classes. And beneath East Asian Library, you can see Kresge Library um, or Kresge Engineering Library. That's a building that you'll get very familiar with as a Berkeley student. Um, Many Berkeley students will come to Kresge um, in between classes, work on projects together, do homework together. So I've definitely spent a lot of time in Kresge myself. Heck yeah, love the libraries. 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, definitely check out as many as you can when you come to campus. Congratulations to our Nobel Prize winners. We had two of them this year. Who else can say that? Just, I think just us. Um, Go Bears to that. Jennifer Downa, all of you bioengineering people, I'm sure would be interested in hearing about her. You all probably already know who she is anyway. Um, she won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for her work on CRISPR. Um, she is a phenomenal researcher. Um, I know that students are always clamoring to get into her lab. <laughs> As Amy said, it is possible, but it's like um, the Lawrence Hall of Science get an internship with her, but you ought to work really hard. So if that's something you're interested in doing, Go for it, work really hard, you got this. And moving on to Reinhard Genzel, 2020 Nobel Prize for Physics with his work on black hole research. I can't even fathom how he managed to do that. Astrophysics is something that was just so foreign to me and it's so interesting, but we've got these incredible, incredible professors who are also teachers still. Like they don't just like sit in their offices and do research all day. They still interact with students. 
Um, so go bears to that, go bears to our research. Um, number one public research university, we got this, we've got the proof for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'm excited. Definitely. And fun fact about being a Nobel Prize winner at Berkeley is one thing that Berkeley gives you is your own parking space. Um, and that's something that's actually very valued in the Bay Area. There's not a lot of parking. Um, and so if you want a Nobel Prize, you can park at Berkeley. Um, moving on to some more notable figures and alumni and faculty here at Berkeley. Um, we have many amazing Berkeley engineers that have gone on to do really cool things in industry and in academia. We have Dean Liu, who is pictured in the top right. She is the current uh, dean of the College of Engineering and actually our very first female dean. Um, she was actually a professor here in the EECS department before being named dean in 2018. And she is internationally recognized for her work in semiconductor research, uh, both in industry and in academia. Below the picture of Dean Liu, you can see a picture of Steve Wozniak at his 1986 graduation from UC Berkeley. Um, he is actually the co-founder of Apple alongside Steve Jobs. Um, Steve Jobs tends to get a lot of the credit, but Steve Wozniak was the technical mind behind Apple. And we actually have a conference room named Wozniak Lounge in Soda Hall, which is our computer science building. And a lot of students will gather in there, work on projects together, do homework together. It's a really great socializing space. Um, and I like to think that maybe the next Apple will come out of Wozniak Lounge. All right, so that's it for um, the tour portion of our presentation. Uh, now we'll jump right into Q&A. Yeah, thank you for that introduction, Amy. So um, a lot of you asked a lot of great questions in the Q&A, so we're gonna kind of gather from that. And the first question is specifically for you, Amy. Um, at the beginning of the tour, someone asked, um, hi, Amy, what is the best part of the EECS program at UC Berkeley? Wow, that's hard because there's so many great parts of the EECS program. I honestly love this major. I'm so glad um, that I am lucky enough to be a part of it. Um, I think a couple of things that stand out to me are definitely the hands-on classes. I talked a little bit about the projects that I've done in some of my classes from computer security to artificial intelligence. You really get a very broad set of education regarding computers, computer programming, different applications of computer programs. Um, you even take a class on ethics and technology. So um, with artificial intelligence becoming more and more prominent, it's important for our engineers to think about the ethical implications um, of having machines do things for us. Um, a couple other things are the EECS department is really supportive in helping us get jobs, um, which is really big as a student. You definitely wanna graduate and have work out there. Um, they'll have career fairs for us, bring in different companies to have info sessions. The companies also usually bring food, which is a big draw for a starving college student. Um, and so the EECS department is just really supportive of its students and wants to make sure that they succeed both in Berkeley and once they graduate Berkeley. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it goes with most departments on campus. They're just super supportive and have so many resources, like more than I could ever imagine when like kind of like signing up for Berkeley and being accepted. So it's really cool, especially with an EECS. It's such a popular program and you might think, oh, there's so many students. I'm not going to get that individualized attention. But most EECS students I know, like still go to office hours and interact with their professors and still have like that community around them that I think is really cool, even in like one of the most popular and largest majors in a you know large university. Um, okay, so we'll go on to our next question. This one's for Kaylin. Someone asked, what is there to do off campus? What is there to do in the city of Berkeley? Any Bay Area recommendations? Absolutely. I've just I love the Bay Area. I was gone all throughout quarantine, so I'm really happy to be back. Uh, there's so much to do in Berkeley. Uh, one of my friends and I described it as the Netflix problem where there's just so much to do that often it's hard to find something to do just because there's literally an endless um, stream of things to have happened. I mean, I can give you just my favorite things that I really enjoy doing. First and foremost are botanical gardens at UC Berkeley. I think they are just absolutely stunning. It's a great, you know, little day trip. 
it's free for Cal students as well. We also have a bunch of museums that are free for UC Berkeley students. Um, in terms of the greater Bay Area as a whole, exploring, going out, having a good time, like just all the general stuff you do in a big city, we've got San Francisco right there. Definitely go explore that, um, check it out. We have a lot of stuff in the city of Berkeley as well, but when you have San Francisco right there, it's a little hard uh, to not go take part, literally 20 minutes over there um, to check it out. Um, anything you could possibly wanna do, we've got that. We've got concerts, we've got just fantastic food all throughout the city of Berkeley. You don't even have to leave Berkeley to get just incredible food. I live right near Telegraph Street or Telegraph, which is, has just endless restaurants. It's a real problem for me because I don't wanna have to spend money on food, but it is very hard for me to cook when I have any type of food I could want right there within walking distance. Yeah, my, one, my biggest recommendation ultimately for all of you, once you started at Cal, explore as much as possible. Just get out there, walk around the city, check out areas you've never seen before because you'll find things to do um, that you would be very surprised that even exist. So check it out and have a really wonderful time with it. Yeah, I definitely recommend everything that Kaylin said. Food is amazing, a bunch of just outdoor activities to do as well. If you're someone who likes to go outdoor into nature, even though like Berkeley's an urban area, there's a lot of just like outdoorsy stuff to do, even within like a 20, 30 minute walk. So um, there's kind of everything in the Bay Area, which I think is really cool, especially coming from Southern California. It's a whole different vibe. I kind of like love how different both of them are. So um, yeah, okay. We'll go on to our next question. So our next question, jumping back to Amy, um, you talked a little bit about it in the answer to the last question about EECS, um, but how does Berkeley help you find jobs after you graduate? Are there any resources for internships or, internships or on-campus work? Yeah, there definitely are. I think the there's a couple of different aspects to this. The first are career fairs. So this is where they'll bring in uh, probably a hundred companies, there's so many. Uh, each of the companies will have their representatives at a booth and then you can go up and talk to the recruiters, uh, different members of the engineering team from that company, hand them your resume, tell them why you're excited to work at their company. Um, and that has often led to internship and job offers for Berkeley students. There's also information sessions that are held by specific companies. So. Um, for example, Google might come in and they'll rent a conference hall in Berkeley and um, they'll give a whole presentation about different job opportunities that are offered at Google. Um, there's also online resources. There's something called Handshake, uh, which has a bunch of job postings that are specific for Berkeley students. And you can go on there and apply for internships and jobs there. And then there's just the general Berkeley student network as well. Uh, you'll find that Berkeley students are really happy to help others find internships and jobs. Uh, referrals are actually really big at tech companies. So if you have a friend who has previously worked at a company that you're interested in, um, almost always they'll be more than happy to give you a referral, which kind of helps you jump the application process and go straight to the interview process. Um, so super helpful that Berkeley students really come together when it comes to job searching and help each other out here. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think one big thing about Berkeley, because it's such a large university, there's just like so much networking that you can get done just between like UC Berkeley, just students, faculty, even alumni. Um, you'll kind of, we won't talk specifically, um, I think more in the general tour, we talk about the different spirit and traditions that we have on campus. But one thing is just like yelling go bears or like wearing a Berkeley sweatshirt, literally anywhere around the world you'll go. And if like, you'll see someone with a Berkeley sweatshirt and you'll just yell go bears. So like, it's just, I don't know, there's just a community around UC Berkeley. And I think it's really cool because that just opens so many doors for people. Um, okay. Perfect. So next question um, that we'll um, ask goes straight to Kaylin. Uh, so someone asked what percentage of engineering undergraduates are women and overall, what is the female experience in STEM? So I don't know the exact percentage because it does vary by major. I will say though that it is much higher than, than a lot of the other um, schools with engineering programs. Like you really aren't gonna be alone here um, in terms of having a lot of women around you. I can speak a little bit more towards the engineer, or sorry, towards the women in STEM experience. I, I'm STEM adjacent. I've done a lot of STEM classes through my, my own major, but 
I will say that the women in STEM that I've met are just incredible. They are some of the most awe-inspiring people I've ever had the pleasure of working with and being around. And from what I can tell, they really help each other out. They really make sure that, you know, everyone's succeeding, everyone's doing well. I, I know my freshman year, every single time I was like in a study room, there were a group of STEM women just collaborating with each other, really making sure that they were doing well, that everyone was doing well. Everyone from, you know, the superstar knows everything, gets 100% without even studying to the person who, you know, really is struggling in the class. So there's really just, I think that's one of the most incredible things about the experience of being a woman in STEM is everyone is in on it together. Everyone is trying to help each other out. Do not worry about the men. They're not going to ruin your experience for you, but hang on to, you know, to the women that you're around because I promise you they will lift you up and make the experience so much better. Um, also, don't be worried about stuff. Like you are smart, you are capable. Like as long as you keep that in your head, you're going to have a wonderful experience. Like you freaking got this. Um, go Bears. Heck yeah. Yeah, like in my experience, sorry about the fireworks, it's almost 4th of July weekend um, in the background, but um, I'd say in my experience, about 30 to 40% of my classes are usually female, so I think it's a pretty good ratio for like compared to other engineering universities around the nation. Um, so yeah, definitely there's a bunch of different organizations on campus that specifically focus on just like hyping up women in STEM because it's not something that's traditionally done. So there's a bunch of organizations and groups that you can join to kind of just like foster that same mentality of just bringing every, everyone up and just like supporting each other. Um, so yeah, thank you, Kaylin, for kind of describing um, that different like culture on campus. Um, next question that was asked in the Q&A, um, we'll go straight to Amy for this one. Is the College of Engineering more competitive or collaborative in your opinion? Ooh, this is a good question. And it was definitely something I was a little worried about coming to Berkeley. Um, I had heard that Berkeley has a competitive reputation, but honestly, that has not been my personal experience here as a student. I found Berkeley students to be very collaborative. Um, and I'd, I'd see competition more as Berkeley students like to compete within themselves to do better themselves and to constantly improve. Uh, Berkeley students all tend to be very driven and hardworking, and we all want to um, do well in our classes, but never at the expense of our classmates. Um, as Kaylin said, Berkeley students spend a lot of time working on homework together, projects together, collaborating, making sure that everyone, that no one's left behind and that everyone um, is able to succeed in the class. And so I have personally had an amazing experience with especially other people in engineering. Um, there's a lot of kind of group collaborative efforts in our classes. Many of our projects are group projects. Um, they let us do homework together. And so there's, it's just a really great environment of people who are really hardworking and driven, but also um, are really happy to lend a helping hand and make sure that no one's left behind here. Yeah, again, I can, you guys are doing great answering these questions. Again, echo everything that Amy said. I think specifically for EECS, there's a lot of project work um, that I've seen in like the one or two like CS driven classes that I've taken. Um, so I definitely agree. It's a lot of project work and kind of professors looking to like students help each other out. If you're just like transparent around the fact that you're working with someone, um, like they're okay with that. Obviously, like copying and all of that is, you know, a no no, but like working together with someone as long as you're making it like visible and being transparent with your GSI and your professor is always something that's kind of um, not looked down upon. It's just like, okay, great, you're working together, you're solving this together. Um, so yeah, definitely, I'd say it's mostly a super collaborative kind of experience um, within the College of Engineering, but honestly, overall, every other major is super collaborative as well. Um, okay, it seems like we have time for two more questions. So our next question is going to be, um, since, since Berkeley is in an urban area, and I know we mentioned that earlier, which is kind of the reason we have so much to offer around the area because it's super urban and there's just a bunch to do around UC Berkeley and around the Bay Area. Um, but some people have concerns about how safe it can be around campus. So Kaylin, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about, a little bit about the safety on campus. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not going to lie, it is an urban area, very flat out. Like 
you're going to face a lot of the problems that urban areas have. Um, I would say, you know, in terms of UC Berkeley being an urban area, it's not a particularly large urban area, so you're not going to face as many problems as you would if you were in San Francisco. Um, but with that, acknowledging that, you know, we do live in, you know, not necessarily, we don't live in a suburb, so we do have some issues with that. I will say students are very, very conscious about safety. The university is very, very conscious about safety. We are always looking out for each other. We are always making sure that people get home safely, no matter what, um, especially late at night. We have tons and tons of resources um, from the university. And even if you choose not to do that, your friends will not let you go home by yourself. Your friends will not let you walk alone at night. Um, I actually had a friend literally take off his shoes for me because I was wearing heels and I had about an eight block walk to go. He was just like, take my shoes. I'm walking you home. He didn't even have shoes on himself. He was that concerned for me, which was just honestly one of the most selfless acts I have ever seen. But that really speaks to the collective consciousness I think that we all have about safety. Um, people do care. People do want to make sure that, you know, their friends are safe. Um, and, you know, just, just don't be an idiot. Like, you've got this, keep your head on straight. Um, and don't hesitate to reach out if you're feeling at all unsafe. Don't hesitate to use the resources. They're there for a reason. Um, and with that, you should be very, very safe. Um, just, just keep your head on your shoulders. Yeah, use a lot of the resources that are available to students on campus, the night safety shuttle, um, um, CSOs that walk around campus, take you from point A to B. Just hop on your phone, let them know you're at Moffitt Library and have to get to unit three and they'll walk you home. So a bunch of different resources to make sure that all of our students are safe and obviously getting home safe because that's super, super important. Um, okay, so on to our last question is what we end every single virtual tour with. And uh, the question is, why did both of you choose Berkeley and what has been the most fulfilling part of coming to Berkeley? So we can start with Amy and then end with Kaylin. Awesome. Yeah, I think for me, when I was in high school, I knew that entrepreneurship and tech innovation were things that I wanted to pursue in college. They were areas of interest. And Berkeley was is just such a standout university on the innovation and entrepreneurship front. Uh, most universities tend to be very hesitant about diving deep into entrepreneurship. They like to stay focused on research and academia, but Berkeley has really embraced tech innovation and taking the research from our labs and actually putting them out into the real world and making sure that real people get to use um, all the cool things that we build here at Berkeley. Um, and so just some of the things that Berkeley offers include Skydeck, which is our on-campus accelerator. We have the House Fund, which is Berkeley's venture capital fund. Um, so just all these different components of Berkeley really investing in their entrepreneurship ecosystem and supporting students who are interested in entrepreneurship um, was really attractive to me. And that was uh, the main reason why I picked Berkeley. Um, and as for my experience here, it has really gone above and beyond my expectations. Um, Berkeley just has so many different opportunities that it's honestly the hard part is like trying to narrow it down and figure out exactly what do I want to commit my time to. Um, but I'm just so grateful for all the different resources and opportunities and the people I've met here at Berkeley. Um, I'm really sad that it's going to be my last year this coming fall, um, but definitely going to try and make the most of it. And I can jump into the same question for me. Um, I'll actually start with what's been the most fulfilling part of being a Berkeley student. Um, I really just kind of want to echo what Amy has said about the students here. I think that is really the most wonderful thing about being a student here is just getting to work uh, with all the wonderful people, Amy and Christina, you two included. Um, it's, it's just an absolute pleasure and it's really an inspiring place to be. Uh, going back a little bit to why I chose Berkeley, my story is a little interesting. Um, I came to a summer camp here right after my freshman year of high school, fell in love with the campus just immediately. I knew it was for me. I didn't want to go anywhere else. Uh, you know, it was just, it was that moment where I knew the, exactly where I wanted to be. Um, 
I even told my college counselor that when I was applying for colleges, I was like, I don't even care about anywhere else. I just want to go to Berkeley. Like, don't even worry about the rest. You know, obviously I applied to many other schools because I had to. Um, and then a fun thing happened. I got waitlisted, uh, which was, you know, a little soul crushing, obviously, uh, but it happens and it's, you know, it's no reflection on any of you um, if that's what was happening to you. Um, so I did the responsible thing. I committed to another school doing a totally different major than what I ended up doing um, at Cal. And then when I found out I got into Berkeley, I actually wasn't excited. I had been so stressed out about the whole college admissions process. Um, that's a little bit why I said what I said earlier about it. Um, I just, I got kind of jaded. Um, I got, you know, pretty upset with it. I was like, I already made a decision. What do you mean I have to make another one again? What do you mean Cal wants me now? Like, sorry, Cal, like I already made up my mind. I went through the decision-making process once, not gonna trick me into doing it again. Um, but then, you know, there was something that it couldn't quite go away. There was a nagging in the back of my head, which was like, okay, Kaylin, you gotta like at least think on it for a couple of days. You can't just turn down Cal right away just cause you're silly and jaded over the whole college admissions thing. Like that's kind of a dumb reason to do that. Um, and it very much so was. Um, and I realized that after I did some more research um, on Cal and I saw a lot of the mottos um, or, or like a lot of like the things that people were doing. And I was like, dang, people are out here really trying to make a difference in the world. And everything just, you know, came back to me why I loved Cal so much in the first place. And I realized, you know, decisions, decisions. I had this one right in front of me here and now. Um, so within, you know, just an hour of researching, I committed to Cal and I haven't looked back since. It's the best decision I've ever made. Oh, thank you both for, both for your Berkeley stories. Those were amazing. Um, never get tired of hearing either of them. Um, but now we'll go on to a few ways that you guys can contact us if you want to learn more about UC Berkeley and potentially apply here. So you can visit our UVisit tour, uvisit.com slash Berkeley. It's basically a almost campus tour in real life. You can kind of Google Maps your way around campus, go into building, hear from different, you know, chancellors, different departments on campus, and just learn a little bit about what campus actually looks like. Obviously, you know, because of these times, you can only do a slideshow, but the U visit tour is a more in-depth experience of campus. Uh, follow us on Instagram at visit UC Berkeley, email tour at berkeley.edu with any follow-up questions, our Bear Talk blog, beartalk.berkeley.edu. You can find stories of different campus ambassadors in written form. Um, like I said before, visit our YouTube channel at visit UC Berkeley for different recordings. Um, we just celebrated 150 years of women and women in engineering this past year. So you can go to 150w.berkeley.edu to check out that celebration, engineering.berkeley.edu for anything engineering related. Um, and then lastly, visit.berkeley.edu if you wanna sign up for any student panels or general virtual visits. Um, so yeah, that was a lot, but check out all those links if you want to learn more about UC Berkeley's campus. Um, and lastly, thank you so much to everyone for joining us for this entire hour. Special thank you to Kaylin and Amy for an amazing tour and some amazing Q&A today. Um, but yeah, we're going to end off with the Go Bears if anyone wants to join us through the other end of the Zoom. Um, and also Kaylin and Amy, if you want to unmute yourselves, um, we'll do a Go Bears on three. One, two, three. Go Bears! Go Bears. Go Bears.